Thank you. Again, thank the witnesses. I yield the balance of my time to recognize Ranking Member Norton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Chase, uh, your testimony was a little scary. You held up a picture uh, that I took note of. Um, and you note that there are currently no standards to ensure that driver assistance technologies protect those outside of the vehicle, including pedestrians and cyc cyclists. As we see the advancement from driver assistance technology to fully self-driving vehicles, we need to protect these vulnerable road users even more. What should Congress and the Department of Transportation be doing to ensure that partially and fully automatic, automated vehicles will prioritize the safety of those walking and bicycling on our roads? Uh, thank you for the question, Ranking Member Norton. I want to um, first clarify, my staff informed me that I made a mis I misspoke and I said automated emergency trucking instead of automated emergency braking. And that brings me to answer your question, actually. On the road to protect vulnerable road users, we should be advancing proven technologies that we know work now. For example, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, which is well known for its crash testing down in Rutgersville, Virginia, is a very prominent and respected um, organization. And they have demonstrated that automatic emergency braking can reduce front to rear large truck crashes by 41%. That's pretty tremendous if you think about it. So on the path to autonomous vehicles, as we think about protecting all road users, including vulnerable road users, we really need to make sure that technologies like automatic emergency braking and other advanced driver assistance systems get into all trucks now. We know how to save lives, we just need Congress and the U.S. Department of Transportation, as you suggested, um, make it happen. There are also other technologies like underride protections, speed limiters, um, and electronic logging devices, which are required in cars now, but there are current, currently um, special interests who request exemptions. We need to protect ELDs because they do make sure that truck drivers are following the hours of service requirements. So in, in sum, there are steps that can be taken on the path to uh, automated trucks that could be saving lives now. Uh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Farrar, now I, I think he, if I recall correctly, that you said displacement would not occur, that the autonomous vehicle companies indeed uh, frequently claim uh, that job losses in the long haul trucking will be replaced by more jobs in short haul routes. But a recent study by the University of Michigan and Car Carnegie Mellon University found that the loss of long haul jobs will not be made up for uh, either in quantity or in quality by short haul jobs. The study notes that short-haul jobs typically pay less and that many truck drivers will have to relocate to find those jobs. These factors could weaken a job option that has long served as a path to the middle class. Can you respond to the study's filings, findings about losses in long-haul trucking sector? Thank you very much for the question. I, I appreciate it. I, I'd be happy to, to take a look at the study and, and take a look at those specifics and engage with you and your staff. Uh, what I will say as a general matter is that the, the reality is, is that we are not moving as much freight in this country as we need to today. We are certainly not going to be able to move as much freight as we need to tomorrow and in many years from now. And so we as a country need to figure out a, a way to do this given the shortages that are happening. Autonomous trucking is, is one of the solutions that is part of a suite of solutions that we can all work together on to ultimately ease a lot of these supply chain challenges. And so we are trying to be a part of, of the overall composition of that. We think this is something where there is plenty of, of work to go around, both for truck drivers, for autonomous trucking companies. This will ultimately al allow alleviation of a lot of the supply chain burden. And so that is the aim of our industry and certainly the way we see things playing out over a very long period of time. Uh Mr. Ermson, uh, uh, um, uh, you, you, you testified that Aurora 
is hoping to launch fully self-driving trucks without a safety driver in the cab uh, by the end of next year. Even if your technology works perfectly, it will essentially need to make life and death decisions when unexpected conditions arise. Uh, is Aurora able to guarantee that its technology will prioritize the safety of people, not property, uh, not infrastructure, but people, when making split-second decisions on the highway? Uh, thank you for the question. And safety is paramount to how we approach uh, developing technology at Aurora. Today, we um, implement what we call a safety case, which is a framework that explains how and why we come to the conclusion that the vehicle is safe to operate, and we've shared that transparently and publicly. We run a lot of, uh, we do a lot of development in simulation where we test challenging scenarios, in, including ones that uh, you, uh, you, you talk about. Just as a concrete example, we looked at fatal accidents that involve trucks on I-45 where our trucks are operating today between the years 2018 and 2022. Across those, there's about 29 of those uh, events where the Aurora driver could have actually been operating the vehicle. And had the Aurora driver been operating, none of those events would have happened, which translates to no fatalities in those situations. Uh, to give you an idea of you know, this type of situations that, that come up, uh, there was one event that we looked at where two passenger vehicles had had a minor fender bender. Uh, the people had got out of the vehicle, were assessing it. Uh, a heavy truck came down the road behind them for whatever reason, uh, noticed the event late, and then swerved on the shoulder to avoid the vehicles, uh, and ultimately you know, killed some people. Uh, in our simulations, what happens is exactly what you would hope would happen. The truck sees them at range, reacts, decelerates, and then lane changes to the left to avoid the, the scene and you know everybody would have gone home safely. So we take that, that uh, uh, objective very seriously. Gentlemen, gentlemen's time's expired.